हेलो डॉक्टर जकी नायक माय नेम इज महेंद्र कुमार एंड आई एम बाय क्वालिफिकेशन एम बी ए एंड वर्क फॉर थॉमस कुक एट फोर्ट माई क्वेश्चन इज रिगार्डिंग नॉन वेजिटेरियन फूड्स इट इज अलाउड इन इस्लाम एनिमल्स आर लिविंग बींग्स so don't you think that it is uh, violence and my second question is that is it compulsory in islam to have non veg food and can a pure vegetarian person can follow islam mr mahesh kumar has asked a very good question he said that in islam you all have non veg food you all kill animals why does islam give permission to kill living creatures and can a muslim be a pure vegetarian brother before i answer the question i'd like to tell you a muslim can be a very good muslim even by being a pure vegetarian it is not compulsory in islam that you should have non veg food it is not compulsory but since allah says in the quran and gives permission for a person to have non veg food in surah maida chapter number 5 verse number 1 it says that eat of the four footed animals which have been made lawful for you It's mentioned Surah Nahl chapter 16 verse number 5 that you can eat the meat of the cattle. It's mentioned Surah Mu'minun chapter 23 verse number 21 that in the cattle we give you a drink which is good for the human kind and of the meat you can eat. So when almighty God gives you permission to eat the meat of the lawful animals then why should we not have? Now come into the logical reason why Islam permits you to have non-veg food. If we analyze non veg food it's rich in protein the human body it requires 23 amino acids out of which eight are not made in the human body it should be given by external diet which are known as essential amino acids now these all eight essential amino acids are present in no kind of vegetable food together it's only present in flesh food so the non veg flesh food is more nutritious as compared to vegetables furthermore if you analyze if you see the set of teeth of the herbivorous animals the cow the goat the sheep they have got flat set of teeth they only have vegetables they don't have flesh food if we analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animals the tiger the leopard the lion they have got pointed set of teeth they have canine set of teeth they only have flesh they don't touch vegetables if you analyze the set of teeth of the human being if you go in the mirror and see we human beings we have got flat teeth as well as pointed teeth if almighty god wanted us to have only vegetables why did he give us this canine teeth why did he give us this pointed teeth for what but natural to have non veg food to have the flesh food furthermore if we analyze the digestive system of the human being if you compare it to the herbivorous animals cow goat sheep they can only digest vegetables the digestive system of the carnivorous animals tiger leopard lion they can only digest flesh food they cannot digest vegetables the digestive system of the human beings can digest both it has small intestine big intestine it can digest vegetables as well as flesh food it can digest both so if almighty god wanted us to have only vegetables why did he give us the digestive system it can digest both as far if you analyze many of the hindus think that hinduism prohibits the eating of flesh food in fact if you read it's mentioned manu smriti chapter number 5 verse number 30 almighty god has created some animals to eat and some to be eaten if you eat the animals that have been created to be eaten then it's not a sin manu smriti chapter number 5 verse number 31 says that almighty god created some animals for sacrifice killing them is not a sin manusmriti chapter 5 verse number 40 says that killing sacrificial animals for sacrifice is permitted it is the law of the god so in hindu scriptures it's permitted to have non veg food if you read the vedas and the other scriptures sages and sants they ate non veg food they even ate beef if you read mahabharat anushasan parv chapter number 88 when the pandavas they gather yudhishthir who is the eldest brother of the pandav he asks bhishma that what food should we give in yagna in puja in sacrifice so that our ancestors will be satisfied so bhishma replies that 
If you give herbs and shrubs and vegetables, our ancestors will be satisfied for one month. If you give them fish, for two months. If you give them meat, for three months. If you give them hair, for four months. If you give them goat, for five months. If you give them bacon, for six months. If you give them birds, for seven months. If you give them deer, for eight months. And the menu continues, big menus there. It says if you give buffalo for 11 months. If you give the flesh of cow, our ancestors will be satisfied for one full year. And if you give red meat of goat or meat of rhinoceros, they'll be satisfied inexhaustibly. So according to Hindu scriptures, eating non-veg is not a sin. It is because many of the Hindus were being influenced by the Ahimsa philosophy of not killing any living creatures. They started accepting it. But even this philosophy of Ahimsa, as you said, that killing living creature is a sin. Brother, do you know that even plants have got life? Do you know that, brother? So if you say killing living creature is a sin, killing a plant is also a sin. So why do you have plants? Agreed. Agreed. Very good. Furthermore, there are some people who say, okay, okay, brother Zakir, I agree that plants have got life, but the plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal. The point to be noted is that today science has advanced and we have come to know even the plants can feel pain. But the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human being because human beings hear the frequency that they hear is from 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above this range you cannot hear. So there was a farmer in America who converted the cry of the plant into the human frequency and you could come to know when the plants were crying, when they wanted water. There was another person who came and argued with me and told me, Brother Zakir, I agree with you that plants have got life, plants can feel pain, but the plants have got about two senses less as compared to the animals. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal. I'm asking you the question, brother. Suppose your brother, your elder brother, he is born deaf and dumb. After he grows up and someone comes and kills him, so will you go and tell the judge, me Lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less. He could not hear, he could not speak. Will you say that? In fact, you will say, give the murderer double punishment. He could not hear, he could not speak. My brother was masoom, he was innocent. So in Islam, it does not work like that. Two senses or three senses. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 168, eat of the good things we have provided to you. As long as the food is halal, it's tayyab for you, you can have it. And furthermore, I personally have got no problem if the non-Muslim don't have non-veg. I've got no problem. Only if they tell me eating non-veg is a sin, it's a crime, that's the time I give the reply. Otherwise, if the non-Muslims in India, they don't have non-veg, it's beneficial for me. If all the non-Muslims in India start having non-veg, then the prices of mutton and beef will rise. It'll be more expensive for me to have it. So personally, I've got no problem. Hope that satisfies your question, brother. Yeah, definitely, sir.